serving uh, Wednesday, our midweek service is at 7 o'clock. We're going to the Book of Romans right now. So, uh, we're having a great time in the Word of God. Amen. I just want to encourage you to be a part of that. Also, Saturday, amen, next Saturday, we're going to have an outreach, amen. We're going to go, amen, amen. No matter how few or how two or how four or how more, no matter, we're going to go, amen. We're going to go pass out flyers and know about Jesus, amen. So next Saturday, amen, we're going to do that next Saturday morning, amen. So you know what, uh, you be prepared for that, amen. And uh, these are all the announcements, amen. We're going to lift up an offering, amen. So let's worship God, amen, as the worship goes forward. Father, Lord, once again, we give you the thanks for the opportunity together in your house, my God. Father God, Lord, we ask you that you bless the gift and the giver, Father God, Lord. Father God, Lord, that you bless the finances of your people, Father God, Lord. Father God, Lord, that you bless their hands, Father God, Lord. These are willing hearts, obedient hearts, giving back to you, Father God, Lord, what righteously belongs to you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I got the life of God in me. I got the life of God in me. I got his love and nature and his ability. I got the life of God. Taekwondo, it's next to the laundromat. But who do people say that we are as a church? Who are we? See, the answer, answer to these questions, the answer to that can only be answered if we ask ourselves first, who, who am I? Who am I in Christ? See, in order for us to be a fruitful church, a church of Jesus Christ, a church of Amen. A planet in the gospel, a church that is reaching the lost for Jesus. We must first ask ourselves, who am I in the kingdom of God? Am I doing all that God has called me to do? Because we are a church that believes, and if you don't know this, this is who we are. We are a church who believes in world evangelism. We are a church, amen, that believes in discipleship, Amen. We bring, we bring in men and women and we believe in instilling the word, parting the word of God, instilling it upon their lives and watching God prosper them. We believe in educating, rising them up in the things of God, amen, uh, and preparing them that they may minister the gospel out, out, in, out, out in the world, amen. We believe in touching the world, amen, uh, uh, reaching the lost and touching other parts, other parts of the world, other countries, other nations. We believe, amen, in, 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 in healing, and, and, and we believe, 
amen, and reaching the lost, those who are hurting. See, the church, the church today is only as strong as its weakest member, amen. That's, a, that's, a, that's something we've heard for our lives. The team is only strong as its weakest player. The chain is only strong as its weakest link. You're the weakest link. And we like to point fingers. But who are we as a church? In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, the Bible says, For as the body, and what Paul writes is he's referring to the church, okay? So for as the body, or church, for as the body is one, and as many members, we're a one body, right? We're one church. We're just one church with many members. But all members of that one body, all members of this one body, being many, are one body. Even though there's many of us, we're still only one. Because we're working together in Christ. Mm -hmm. So also is Christ. God, I pray God you bless your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So the church is one body with many members. Then shouldn't it be everyone who suffers when one of its members suffers? If we're one body, if, if my leg hurts, my brain knows my leg hurts. Natural. This COVID-19, this coronavirus, people get sick. And what happens is, is the, the sickness, the ailment take, goes upon their body and, and, it, and it'll create, it's a respiratory illness. It will create strain. On their lungs and, and infections and, 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 and problems. People, amen, who are healthy, amen, now live with oxygen. Because one thing leads to another. And people, amen, who, 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 are, who have healthy hearts, amen, wind up dying of heart attacks related by the coronavirus because, because the strain of their lungs, amen, affected the beat of their heart, amen, and brought strain upon their body. This is true with other sicknesses, not just this coronavirus. I say the coronavirus only because it's what's in everybody's mind today. So when one part of the body, amen, is, is affected, amen, it, it, really, it really goes and it travels throughout the body. It, it will affect other parts, amen. So is the body of Christ. We are one body. Although we're many, many members, we're still one body. So when one person in the church, amen, is hurting, one church, one person in the church is, is going through problems, amen, it should affect all of us. So, so should it be, amen, when one person in the church prospers, and, and so when one person in the church, amen, is blessed, amen, we should all rejoice. Because we're one body. Many members, but we're one body. So now I ask you, ask, who are you today? How are we functioning as a member of the body of Christ? As a member of the body of the church, how are we functioning? Are we functioning together as a body of Christ? Are we moving forward in the direction that God is calling us to do? You see, you see in, in, in company picnics and family reunions where, they, uh, where they'll do like a, a three-legged race, amen. Two people, amen, three legs, go figure. There's four legs, there's three, two people, amen, but they tie two together. So they have to in sync Amen. Move their legs in, 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 in sequence and, and, and understand how they're going to be moving so they can go on that three-legged race. And if they're not functioning together, amen, they're going to continuously fall. Then they try to get up and then they fall. And they try to get and then they fall. Because they're not working in sequence. They're not working in unison together. So is the function of the church, amen. If we're not moving together in the right direction, together as one, what happens, amen, is, is, is we begin to walk and we stumble, amen. Then we go walk and we stumble again. But the important thing is that we're going to get up. So as a church, as a member of the body of Christ, who are we today? Who are you? See, living for God is and will be the absolute most rewarding thing you will ever do in your life. It doesn't matter how old you are today. You can be young, you can be old. It doesn't matter. This will be the most rewarding thing you'll ever do. This will be the absolute most rewarding thing you ever do. In heaven and on earth. Because in heaven, we already know the rewards are great. 
you know, I'm going to build a mansion for you. He says, in my, in my, in my father's house are many mansions, I'm going to go build them for you. So we know that the rewards in heaven are going to be great. But the rewards on earth are going to be even great. Because God, God is faithful and true to his word. God said he's going to bless you. God said he's going to move in your life. God says that he's going to take care of you. He says, he says, he says that the birds of the air, they, they fly back and forth and they go and they, and they, don't, they don't worry about their food or what's going to happen tomorrow. Then why, if they don't even do that, then why should you? If a bird doesn't do it, why should you worry about it? Because he says, God says, because he's going to take care of you. Amen. So it's going to be a rewarding time in our lives. So, so living for God, amen, no matter what you're going through today, it will be the most rewarding thing you'll ever do. The church, when it is operating in a healthy manner, serves the community. Do you realize us as the local church, we are the community church. Our, the name of our church is New Destiny International Ministry, and I go over this many times. I take pride in the word international because in order for us to, I feel, in order for us to put that title upon our church, we must earn the title of international ministry. We must earn that title. Well, how do you earn that title? Well, we must help with the international works. So we help with the international works. Although we're, we're just a few and although we are a small church, there's no reason why we can't help international works. We don't need, we, we can't solve world hunger, but hey, we can go help, we can still feed somebody. So we're, we're involved with that. But as a church, as a community church, the community church serves the community as a hospital which is where the wounded go to get healed that's the community church the community church is also a food pantry it's a place where people come when they're hungry and they need something and I'm not just talking about the spiritual food I'm talking about physical food the community church is also a shelter it's a place of shelter when people have shelter they have comfort they feel a sense of belonging. That's what shelter brings. It brings safety. That's the community church. The community church is a place of refuge. A place of refuge is a safe place. It's a place where you go where you don't need to worry about what's going to happen. You don't have to worry. Look over your shoulder. It's a place where you can go and you can just relax. It's a good place to be. That's who we are. That's what the church, that's what we're called to be. See, not everyone can fulfill all of those positions. Not everyone can do it. I understand that. God understands that. Not everyone here, amen, can feed the community. Not everyone here can be the hospital. Not everyone here, amen, can, can, can supply that shelter. Not everybody here, amen, can, 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 can be part of that refuge. But all of us here can take part in moving the community church forward. Yeah. It takes all of us working together to make all these need, have all these needs met. See, they wouldn't know us. They wouldn't know us by our fruits. I've heard people say, I won't go to a small church because they don't have enough programs for my family. I love God. I know how to serve God. I've been serving God for a long time. And if that church doesn't have enough programs for the youth, for Sunday school nurseries, uh, they don't have uh, marriage programs. They don't have all these different programs. I don't want to go to that church because it just doesn't have it. Pastor, you know what? We need a, a, a singer. Why don't your wife sing? Why don't you sing? You know, Pastor, we need musicians. Why don't you play? And, 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 and we can go back and forth on, 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 on who can be and who can be and what should they do and how, can they, how they can they fulfill. But the thing is, is that we are the one body in Christ. And a lot of a lot of things need to take place. Amen. When 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 we function as a church, Amen. They will know who we are. Did you know that when somebody walks through the door, it is not the pastor's job to greet them. It's my job to comfort them. It's my job to to teach them. It's my job, Amen, to help guide them and lead them in the right direction to be the shepherd and help them protect them, Amen. But it is the job of every member of that body to greet that person. Right. Introduce yourself. Hey, my name is. What's your name? You live in the area? Man, I'm glad you made it. How'd you hear about us? Man, praise the Lord. You know you're in the right spot. God is good. He's helped me. He's going to help you. Man, you're in the right spot. Why don't you come sit next to me? That's the job of the community church. 
See, when people, I've seen people go into church and not a single person talk to them. They walk in the church, they go and sit down, and they get up, they sit through the whole service, they get up and they walk out. Not a single person talks to them. And when they leave, they say, no, there's no love in that church. And they're telling the truth. We're the church, we're the body of Christ. See, they'll know us by our fruits. In Matthew 12, 33, Jesus says, make the tree good. And it's fruit good. Or else make a tree bad. And it's fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. The tree's either going to be good, and all the trees are going to be good, or the trees are going to be bad, and all the trees are going to be bad. Because us as the body of believers, however we function, Creates a chain reaction how the person next to us is going to function. And unless we correct it and get it, get involved and say, you know what, God, I am going to be your servant and do the things you have called me to do. I'm no longer going to run away from it, but I'm going to be in the middle of it. Because I understand that in order to build a church, amen, that's going to serve the community, not just for today, but for generations to come, I'm going to have to do this. I remember. I remember. I remember. You remember, I remember. I remember, I remember, you remember. I remember when the Rialto Church was ready to get going back in the 90s. So the Rialto Church used to be in Fontana. That's our mother church. That's the church we come from. But the church in Rialto used to be in Fontana. <coughs> and we moved to Rialto a couple years ago. Well, it's been a while now, a few years back, because just building opportunities and, and, and the growth and the way it was going. Nothing to do with the city at all. Matter of fact, they still call themselves part of the Fontana area. Um, but I remember when uh, Pastor Edmund was and Sister Lily were were, were pioneering the church. Mm -hmm. uh, amen. And and I remember that they that they got a couple people going. And Pastor Edmund and Sister Lily were there for a couple years, and then they moved on and went to become assistant pastors somewhere else. And they're currently in uh, El Central. Great couple. But this was back, I remember back in 95, 94, somewhere around there. 95. Today in the same church, amen, it has grown. A lot of people have gone through there. But when I say as a community church, we're not here for the church, for the people for today. We're here for generations to come because right now in that church, there's three generations of people serving God in that church. You have a grandmother. You have their, you actually, we're going on four. We have the grandmother. We have their children, we have their children's children, and then we get their grandchildren. All going to that same church. Because the church is being built for generations to come. The idea of this church growing is not so Pastor Ben can just uh, have a church and become a full-time pastor. Actually, I, I don't even know, I don't even, full-time pastoring is not even a thought of mine, to be honest. I really, I, I'm, too, I'm too active. I don't know how to sit still. I'm very, very active. Amen. So I, I have to be doing something all the time. I will figure out ways to make myself more available for the church. But as far as ever becoming a full-time pastor, getting on salary and all that, you know, if that happens, it happens. If it doesn't, praise the Lord, we're going to serve God anyways. But the goal is to create a church that's going to serve the community to come. Yes, that's right. To, to reach the loss of your grandchildren who are not yet born. Mm -hmm. You're not even... You, I, there's a friend of mine. I took him... <laughs> He's probably watching it. He took, I took him to go, to go look at cars a long time ago. About six, seven years ago. About six years ago. Seven, yeah, six, seven years ago. Single guy. Works with me. Has a good job. Makes good money. And I, at the time, I had just bought my Challenger, which I don't have anymore, but I bought the Challenger. So I took him where I bought my Challenger at, and I said, hey, look at these, man. Look at the Challengers, you know. You're a single guy. Buy, buy one of these. Buy one better than mine. He said, well, no. Why? Why I need a four door car. What do you need a four door car for? Well, because you know I'm gonna get you know for my wife and the baby. For what? Because for my wife and the baby, I go, dude, you don't have a girlfriend. What are you talking about? <laughs> True story. Uh, he goes, he goes, and he's serious, serious as a heart attack. He says to me, he goes, he goes, yeah, but I'm gonna get married. And I'm gonna have a family. Mm -hmm. He goes, and I gotta, I gotta be prepared today for that family. Right. He was dead serious. Mm -hmm. Good kid. Mm -hmm. That's what we're building—a church for that. Mm -hmm. This man, this young man, 
wasn't married, didn't even have a girlfriend. Amen. He reminds me, his character, characters, reminds me of one of my uncles, my uncle Manuel. Kind of reminds me of that real tin <laughs> And just, just, oh my God. you knew him, you laugh. But <laughs> anyways, <clears throat> reminds me of him. So, but he understood that his purchase needed to fulfill the need yet to come. It didn't exist yet, but it's going to come. That's who we are as a church. So when we say, who are you today in the body of Christ? If, if, if the body of Christ is made of many members, but yet we're one body, amen. Who are you? What part of the body are you? Are you a, a functioning part of the body? Are you, or are you the, that ninth and tenth toe, amen, that doesn't help you keep your balance? Who are you today? Are you, are you, are you a, a part of the body, amen, a, a vital organ, amen, that, that keeps the blood flowing throughout the body and, and keep it moving? Or are you the appendix, amen, that can get removed and you can still function? What part of the body are we today? Jesus says either, either make a tree good and its fruit good or make a tree bad and its fruit bad. Either way, whatever you do, amen, you will be known by your fruit. Yes, amen. What does that mean? By what you produce. A tree, a, a fruit tree produces fruit. It creates and makes fruit. And you know that if you get an orange tree, you know what it's going to produce? Oranges. So you're going to get an orange tree, man. You get an orange tree, a little skinny orange tree, man. It grows one orange and it tilts over. It's all lopsided, man. I got a big head like mine, man. Just tilts it to the side. <laughs> but eventually, man, the branches grow out and it gets another orange. So the oranges come out, man. And, and, and instead of tilting this way, it begins to balance itself. Then another one will grow and it'll go that way and it'll begin to pull itself one way, then another will grow this way and bring itself back and begin to balance itself. And to the naked eye, you look at the oranges, all four oranges that just grew away, man, and guess what they all look like? Oranges. They all look the same. They didn't change. Because the fruit was produced. So when it says that you know what will be known by our fruit, it's a simple analogy. You know what? It'll be known because, well, because you're going to build a person according to who you are. Do you want another you walking around in church? Be honest. Man, we need more of me in church. Mm. I'll say it. I need more. I need more Ben's. I need more Ben's yes. in church. I need more Ben's. I need more Marcus in church. I do. I need more of them. I want to produce more Ben and Marcus. I, I need to. I want to produce that. That's what I want to produce. Why? Because I know that that fruit, amen, is, is, is very fruitful. Sweet tasting, and I know that it's going to produce more fruit. So, who are you today in church? Do I? Do you want more of you in church? Are you part of the body of Christ? Are you moving the things of God forward? So, what is what what fruit are we as a church producing, or what fruit as a as a Christian are we producing? See, when people go to the hospital. They go, they go because they are sick. Not because they're trying to get sick. That's not what they're trying to do. You know, how many of you ever went to the hospital because you felt good? Oh, I felt good today. I think we'll go to the hospital. Besides Jesse, because he works there. Right <laughs> but <clears throat> how many of you ever just feel good? You know, today's a good day to go to the hospital. It's a nice day to have open heart surgery. Oh, let's go see what the doctor's feeling today. Right. We never do that. I don't go to the Matter of fact, when we get sick, we don't want to go to the hospital. We don't. We don't want to be there. I don't. But I do know people, my dad, for instance, who felt sick for about a year, who had a pain in his side, and felt it for a year, didn't want to go to the doctor, didn't want to go to the hospital. But when he finally went, they found out he had cancer. See, people come to church, amen, because they need healing. They come to church because they need they need to be restored in the body, amen. So when they come and we're in the hospital, amen, uh, are, we, are, we, are we bringing healing to the body, amen? So people don't go to the hospital to get more problems, amen. They go to the hospital, amen, to be relieved of the problems. The church is the same way. People don't come to church, amen, to get problems. They, don't, they come to leave them behind. They don't come, amen, to feel condemned. Yeah. They come, amen, to feel redeemed. Yes, that's right. That's why we go to church, amen. You didn't come to church because your life was perfect. 
I never went to church because my life was perfect. That's right. The people who go to church because their life is perfect, amen, typically live their life as if they don't need church. Come on. Jesus says those, when you do things in the name of yourself, all, you, you, all yourself is your reward. Mm -hmm. But when you do things in the name of Christ, amen, heaven's your reward. So people who don't who, 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 who don't need who have no problems who don't need it they don't come to church and those who do it man they just come visit oh I felt good today went home and that's it mm. what are we gonna have for lunch and that's it <laughs> I had I had my injection of the Holy Spirit this week I went Sunday morning got the early service don't need God for the rest of the week I'll see him again next week wow. it's the same thing you do when you go visit your son in, in prison. Visit him once a week. You're allowed to go visit him once a week. You get to look at him through the glass window. Yeah, still, you're still my son. Okay, bye. Well, talk to you later. Walk out. And we keep God in a box, in prison. See, people come to church because they want, they want, they want to be, they want to be uh, set free. See, the works of the flesh are, are as this in Galatians chapter five, verse nineteen to twenty-one. This is the works of the flesh. We talked about this. The Bible said the work of the flesh is the works of sin. It's the work of our fleshly desires. It's the things that within us that we want to do, the things that we that we desire to do that are that go against the Spirit of God. That's the works of the flesh. And Paul says in Galatians, says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are. These are the works of the flesh, okay? Things that are sinful. Adultery, fornication. Uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sor sorcery, hatred. We talked about that this morning, hatred. Contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath. You ever seen somebody just outburst of wrath? Mm. Just just go off? Right. Just all of a sudden? Outbursts of wrath. Self-ambition. Self-ambition. Well, I'm going to go for me. I don't need to do with them. I'm here for me. I go to church because I, 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 I'm a better person now. I feel good. Self-righteousness is, 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 is a sin. Self-ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkardness. And we see things like, like, like murder and say, well, I don't kill nobody. We're in church. We're dealing with spiritual things. Mm -hmm. You know we have the ability to kill the spirit of God in somebody? Remove the taste of God out of their mouth for a while? Say, I don't want to go back to a church like that again? One, they wind up in some occult, some occult. You don't think it's true? I know people. Murderers, drunkenness, revilers, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Come on. See, the church is a spiritual hospital in, in this, in this, and this spiritually sick come to be healed, we need to make sure we are not curing them of a runny nose and sending them home with cancer. Isn't that crazy? People right now, when the pandemic broke out, hospital visitations dropped. And it was amazing because you hear all these people that are getting hospitalized for the coronavirus and, and you've got, you got like the ICUs and all that are, are fully functioning, but then you've got the rest of the hospital that's not functioning. They were talking about laying off a bunch of nurses and hospital workers at one point because it wasn't functioning the way it should because people were afraid to go because they didn't want to go and get the virus because they know that you go to a hospital because that's where sick people go. So people who had the virus would go to the hospital and they knew, hey, I need to stay away from the virus, so maybe I should stay away from the hospital. And they stayed away from the hospital. So you don't, you don't, you don't, you didn't, you didn't want to go to the hospital because you had diarrhea, amen, and you came back with coronavirus. You don't do that, right? You go to the hospital to re, to leave it there, yeah. not to, not to take something else home. Same as the church. People don't come in, amen, with a broken heart because their marriage is falling apart, amen, and then leave with an adulterous mind. That's not what the church is for. People don't come, amen, with, with long, deep, hurting, uh, 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 pain, amen, that, that they can't get their heart and their mind to connect to one another, amen, because uh, they're confused and their life is upside down and all lopsided, amen, and come in, amen, to, to, to come in and, and, and begin to understand that, that there's no love in God. 
So that when people come, we don't want them to come in with a runny nose and send them home with cancer. Right. <coughs> Our church has been open. September was two years. And as a church, we've been open for two years. We've done more in two years than most churches do in 20. Not all churches, and this isn't something I'm saying even for our fellowship, because our fellowships, they do, we do what our fellowship does. But there's churches that I know of. We've done more in two years than most churches have done in 20. Mm -hmm. In the past two years, we've given out food to the people who are needy. Mm -hmm. We gave we even gave a bite for Christmas to a to a kid who didn't come to church. We just knew that he was that he, he was he was in need. We sent money to help mission works in Peru and Africa. We fed the homeless. We've gone out to reach the lost. Yes, yeah. we've probably already prayed for hundreds of people in the city. Um, I'll just, I'll, you know, let me pray for you, man. You know, says, God, you can start running up and just, God wants to help you. Let me pray, let me pray. You know, let me pray for you. Let me pray with you first, and then I'm going to pray for you after. You know, do you mind? No, go ahead, and I'll pray for him. You get him to accept Jesus Christ. If everybody who's come through those doors would come, we'd be sitting about 100 people. Easily. So we, we've done a lot in this past in this past couple of years. But we're not done. See, we're, we're, we're not done. Right. We're reaching the world for Jesus. We're, 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 we're earning our place in the kingdom of God. Yeah. This is our fruit. This is who we are today. So you come, you want to know, well, what kind of church am I a part of, amen? This is the kind of church you're a part of, amen? We're a church, amen, uh, that has a world evangelistic view, amen, that believes that everybody needs Jesus and they need to be saved, amen, to inherit the kingdom of God. In Philippians 2.12, therefore, my brethren, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Paul's writing to the, the, the church of Philippi, and he's telling them, he says, not he, the things, he says, you, you've obeyed, you've obeyed the things of God, you've obeyed the things that I've, I, I, I've instilled in you, you've obeyed them. That means, that means you are doing the works, uh, your fruits are evident, uh, and, and you're doing them. You have not only done them in my presence, but you've done them in my absence. That's important. He, that he, he's tied not just when you have that warm, fuzzy feeling about Jesus, but you're doing it even when it's when you're not having that feeling. Have you ever told somebody about God when you just didn't believe God was even running around you anymore? I know one time, Amen. Uh, it was the anniversary of my uh, the death of my father, Amen. And we had an outreach in Rialto or Fontana at the time. And we would go pass out flyers, and I was just mentally, nobody knew. I was just mentally, I was just kind of, you know, missing my dad and kind of feeling it. And we went on outreach, hey amen. I remember we were just an hour long outreach, whatever it was, in an apartment complex. I remember thinking, you know what, God, I'm not going to let this feeling overtake me. And I, and I said, I say, God, we're going we're to glorify my dad for, for, for this feeling right now. And I went and, I, and I, I prayed for nine different people that day. Nine people got saved. At the end of the afternoon, I was like, how in the heck were you able to do that? It's just, you just ask people. See, as we serve God, we're to always serve with fear and trembling. That's what Paul says. He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And not be fooled. We need to know that the devil is real. He's playing for keeps. He does, the devil does not want to hurt you. The devil does not want to hurt you. He wants to kill you. He wants to kill your mind. Amen. If the devil can kill your mind. Amen. Before he kills your body. Amen. He, he, he will have the victory because whatever he destroys in your mind but you to come against God. Amen. You're going to spread that. Amen. Like wildfire to other people. So the devil's trying to, to hurt you uh, uh, mentally. Amen. To get your discord. Amen. With Christ. Amen. Because he wants you to spread that like wildfire. Amen. 
This is why we're to protect our salvation in our church. Our attitude, feelings, personalities does not just affect us. Understand this. Your attitude, your feelings, amen, the things that you go through, it doesn't just affect you. It infects all those who come across to you. It's like an injection. It's like, it's like a sickness, amen. It gets injected into other people. But Paul says, uh, amen, in Galatians 5, 22 to 26, it says, but the fruits of the Spirit... The fruits of God, the fruits of the Spirit. It is love, it's joy, it's peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. And those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. So the Bible says these are the fruits of the Spirit. If we as a church are as one body, then if we were a tree, as a church, you'd be a branch. And when God comes to your branch, what fruit will he find? Will he find sweet tasting fruit? Or is he going to find a, 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 an orange tree with a branch of lemons? What's he going to find today? You see, God is calling us to greater things. We are one. In the past couple of years, you know, we, we gave up food. I still give up food. Uh, everything that I say we've done this past, I still do it. I'm doing it. Me and my wife, we haven't stopped. We still take food. We go around driving around giving food out to people. It's it's what we do. It's just what we do. We've been blessed, amen. Uh, Pastor Sean comes, he got to a connection with somebody. They, the, 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 we get boxes of food, and we go around giving it to people that need it. Yes, that's right. And people will say, well, when, you know, what do you want? I said, you know, when you get a chance, come to church. That's right. Come to church. Come visit us. God loves you. You know what? Follow us on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. Look at us. And come on by. Just one time. I tell everybody, just come once. I don't tell everybody to come join. Sign a membership card. I don't think we have membership cards. You just come. One time. <laughs> tell everybody, come one time. Come, come one time. That's, that's all I need to tell them. But we're still giving out food. We still see homeless people and give them chips and give them stuff that we have. We still do those things. Just because I don't, I don't call a corporate outreach, amen, doesn't mean I'm not outreaching. Yeah. We're still passing out flyers. And if I don't feel like it, because there's times I don't feel like it, my wife makes sure I do feel like it. <laughs> hey, go give him a flyer. Mm -hmm. And I look at her like, oh, darn you, okay. Oh, we'll go. Mm -hmm. and, and I do. Why do I need a corporate outreach to my people to church? Why? That should be something we do anyways. It should be who God is in us. We're supposed to be fruitful. We're supposed to, we're supposed to be living for God. And if you're living for God, amen, you're, you're thankful for the things God has done. You know, I've been married, amen, and we've been together for 30 years and married for 28. And, and, and throughout the years, you know, sometimes, amen, my wife never thinks about it because she thinks that I don't love her and I hate her guts. But mm -hmm. we'll be sitting on, 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 the, on, the, on the couch and she'll be watching TV or playing her little video game. She thinks she's going to get paid for playing video games on her phone, but she's sitting there. She's sitting on the inside of the couch. <laughs> and I'll be sitting there. She won't even pay attention, but I'll stare at her. And she won't even know. She won't even know. She won't even know. Now I'm telling now she's going to be looking for it. But I'll stare at her and I'll look at her and I'll smile. And I don't say nothing, but I just look at her. And it's because I developed an appreciation for her. One that 20 years ago I didn't have. I didn't have, I didn't have that appreciation before. <laughs> But I develop appreciation for her. There's a love for her that I, I just want to do good for her. I want to do good by her. I want, to, I want to do good things for her. And in a relationship, you can see that. You can feel that because it's a physical thing and, and, you, and you have that person. Mm -hmm. But how much more for God? You know why I invite people to church? Give them food and go out of my way to pray for them? People will call me and say, hey, Basher, can you come pray for this person? This is what happened. And I take off, I go. No question, let's go. I don't care where it's at, let's go. 
I've had people who don't even come to this church and don't even know us, and we didn't even know. We just we don't want to evict them to go pay for people. Mm -hmm. Which is just what we do. You know why? Because I have an appreciation for what God has done in my life. Yes, that's right. Man. It has nothing to do with me being a pastor. Because these same very things I've been doing since I've been serving God. It has nothing to do with me being a pastor. I'm a pastor because I've always done these things. I don't do these things because I'm a pastor. Come on. It's the love of God. It has to be have the love of God in us that we can go and reach the lost for Jesus. And then I can read about it very close with respect to Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, as we serve God, a lot of times we're, we're trying to find our place in the body of Christ. Well, I don't have nothing to offer. I don't know how to do any of those things. Uh, you know what? I, I'm shy or I'm timid. And I, you know, I can't afford to. And we have all these things that we come up with. And some of them are legitimate, you know. Especially when we start getting into finance. Well, I can't afford to go out of my way. You know, I can bring you forward to gas and get your church in yet. Now you want me to go? I, I get that. I, I do. I do. That's okay. We can still do something for God. We can still move forward. We actually have a, a small church van now. If we're gonna if we're gonna do something, amen. We'll go around picking you up. It's okay if I have to take off an hour or two hours before an event to go pick people up. That's okay. Don't cancel yourself out in the things of God. Come on. Well, I live too far and and, 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 and I don't want to invite my neighbors because you know it's not by the church. Well, okay, but how does that make sense? Well, because they live too far. Is it really? Well, yeah. You come. Come on. I don't want to buy my neighbor. I live in Rialto. I don't want my neighbors to the Rialto church. I have my neighbors here. Yes, I'm on. Why? Why not? I come. Mm -hmm. If it's not too far for you, it ain't too far for them. People will drive for God. Yes, that's right. Invite people. Let God use your life. Stand up and say, God, okay, here I am. Tired of running. Let God know how much you love him this, this evening. Amen. We're going to stand. We're going to sing a song. But I want to leave these altars open. Amen. If God spoke to you, amen, I want you to come to the altar. And I want you to seal with God, amen, as we sing this song. You allow God, amen, to be the Lord of your life. Song, amen. It's all standing to this song, amen. It's